first with Mike Griffith and then Chip Towers. Uh, Coach, you knew South Carolina was a tough matchup. What, what, went, uh, what went wrong against the Gamecocks today? Well, I would say it starts with me, to be honest with you, because um, they, they, they wanted to fight and we didn't. So I did a poor job of having our guys completely 100% understand what this game was going to entail because um, we never, we never locked into the fight and they were aggressive. They started in zone. And so in all honesty, um, when nobody uh, plays well, when nobody leads their teammates and when nobody's really willing to go through a cut, get hit, go up strong through the contact that falls back on me. It really does. And so um, I've got to do a way better job, put the blinders on. And it, it, it wasn't because of practice. It wasn't because of preparation. It wasn't because of fatigue. Um, but when no one is in the fight, that falls back to the head coach. And that's where I'm at. Yeah, coach, you, you touched on this just a little bit, but, uh, you know, matchups problems are real. And, and, and I just think of your, your teams as being, you know, really offensive finesse. And I think of his teams, Frank Martin, to being just uh, scrappy and almost fouling every time down the floor on their defensive end. Is this just a poor matchup of styles of play? Well, it could be because we haven't had success with them. It could be. And, and they brought their best. I mean, they had, you know, Trey Hannibal, they left home uh, from Mississippi State. Uh, and today he comes in. I mean, he, uh, he pushed the right buttons uh, with his team. And um, so, yeah, it, it's probably some truth to that. But that doesn't have anything to do with not cutting and standing um, and, and not cutting through the lane and taking the hit and going through it. I mean, that, that's how we play. And we didn't do that today. Um, we did not cut and move and move the team the way that we needed to move it. And our, and our passing uh, was not uh, maybe one or two dribbles too late. Occasionally it was one or two dribbles late a lot. And so uh, the movement just wasn't there. And then when you see that we're not getting that, that's what we have to try to go inside even more. And uh, there were times there we didn't finish. I'm not sure how many layups we missed, but um, we just got to get, I, I, like I said, I did a poor job of them understanding how the level of fight and toughness was going to be needed in this. And we've been pretty good with that as of late, but we weren't today. Okay, let's have Anthony Dasher and then Mark Weiser. Hey, Coach, on uh, days and nights when Severe is, is struggling offensively, uh, kind of what is uh, – is happening with the other guys to not be able to kind of overcome that and, you know, pick him up, I guess, when things aren't going right. The ball, didn't, the ball didn't move well enough tonight and we didn't have enough cutting. Um, a lot of times when, when you don't want to go through the fight, you want to settle for jump shots. And um, that's somewhat of what we did tonight. And we just weren't, uh, uh, our spirit got zapped early on. Our immaturity came out, to be honest with you, with the officiating. And, and we have to be beyond that. We, you know, we have to be beyond that, but we aren't. So, like I said, I, I did a, I did a poor job because we were not beyond not getting frustrated about lack of calls or physical play. And we didn't cut through it and, and uh, um, embrace the contact that goes into this. So uh, that's, that's kind of what the day was like for us. Tom, Justin was talking about needing to find a way to be more consistent. Obviously, you guys had some uh, quality wins against LSU and, and Missouri, um, but you've had some lopsided losses. Is that uh, a sign of a kind of growth for a team that, that it can be more consistent night in, night out? Yeah, probably. I would say you're right. I would say that, you know, when you can get through that um, and, and eventually the, the experiences that you go through in these hard fought games, have got to come out no matter what. And that doesn't mean you're going to win but it's got to come out no matter what. And we didn't have that today. Let's have Andy Walsh and then Tori Heck. Hi coach. Um, you guys got into the bonus with, I think about eight minutes to go and 24 second half free throws, you know, shot twice as many free throws as South Carolina. I guess, you know, those seem like some ideal stats. How frustrating is it that you guys weren't able to take advantage of those types of things? Well, that's, that's when, when we have to try to create a game where we're getting fouled, um, when we're not cutting as well and when we're quiet and um, not making jump shots uh, as, as consistently as Justin and uh, PJ did. But, 
but uh, I think they're looking at it. They're the only two to make threes. Um, it's important. I mean, it's it's important. It's important. We have to manufacture points. We have to man so we can get our defense set. And uh, the quieter we get, the more we've got to get fouled. And and uh, when we're playing aggressive and we're communicating and and um, there's leadership and the spirit is strong, uh, then it's a little bit different. But when it's not, you've got to try to manufacture points the best you can. Hey coach, like you just mentioned, those those three pointers were just made by Justin and PJ, and a decent performance from Andrew as well tonight. Do you feel like those three grad transfers stepped up to the plate at all tonight? Yeah, you know what? When you lose, I'm sorry, I'm just not there, right? I mean, I'm proud of those three. It was senior day; they did a good job. But I'm not big on the whole uh, accolades for losing. So they did a good job. I'm glad we have them, but we lost the game. Okay, let's have Jed May and then Ryan Curley. Hey, Coach, you mentioned, you know, the, immature, <clears throat> the immaturity with, with the calls leading to, you know, less cutting, less ball movement. You know, at this so point – No, I didn't the, say that. I didn't say that. The immaturity with the calls. The less cutting and less ball movement was because of the physical play. Oh, okay. okay. That, I'm that's, sorry. That's, where, that's what it was. It okay. wasn't just that. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I, guess, I guess with all that combined, then, you know, at this point of the season as a coach, just how, I guess, frustrating is that to you to see on the sidelines? And, and what can you do to have your guys, I guess, get over that kind of thing? I got a week to figure it out. And so, like I said, I put my blinders on and, and uh, we'll work at figuring it out. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask about Katie Johnson and if you wanted to get him more involved scoring inside. I noticed a lot of times tonight he, uh, you know, he would catch the ball on the wing and kind of stand there and wait for stand something there. to yeah, happen. That, that's not, him standing there is not part of the game plan. Uh, him, him driving long closeouts, him being ready to shoot, him moving without the ball is part of the game plan. That's part of how we play, and, and we didn't get that today. All right, and the last two questions. Let's have Davis Baker and then Palmer Toms. Coach, at times this season, you've talked about the lack of offense affecting the defense. Did you think that happened again tonight? Uh, I don't know. Uh, probably. Nothing got us. Nothing got us uh, our, our spirit and fight where it needed to be, so I'm sure that's part of the equation. Yeah, Coach, Justin you know, was telling us that the senior day videos meant so much to him and, and the rest of the seniors. Uh, what role did you play in that, and, and who deserves the credit there? Uh, our, our staff deserves the credit for that, not me. Heather Heather McCormick, John Bateman, uh, uh, the people that put the put the films together. All right, thanks so much, Thank Coach. You.